Hello there, I'm Fernanda, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can assess the quality of a handbag so that you can determine if it's worth spending your money. Hello there, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome to you as well. I make videos to help you create a wardrobe that you love without having to buy a million things to do so. And when you are being intentional about the things that you allow into your wardrobe, it is very important to assess the quality of them so that you can actually get value for your money. Because the less stuff you have, the more you're going to use it, so the more you want it to last. So today I'm going to teach you some things to look out for when you are considering bringing in a new handbag into your wardrobe so that you can assess whether it's worth the investment. And if you're new to my channel, then go ahead and subscribe. You can hit the diamond over here to do so and give this video a big thumbs up if you too prefer quality over quantity. I'm gonna take you through the most obvious signs to the ones that require a more critical eye. And for the purposes of this video, I am gonna be assessing the quality of a Teddy Blake handbag, which the brand sent to me a few months ago. I've repackaged it so that it can take you through the whole experience of what a new Teddy Blake bag would look like if you were to get one. But keep in mind that most of these tips will work regardless of whether you are buying a bag secondhand or brand new. All right, so here is the dust bag. This is the Ava Croco Gold in green. This is the 11 inch model and it was part of their fall 2020 collection. So this is the bag and I'm not gonna take you through all of the details now because we're gonna go through them step by step. It has gold hardware and it's a very beautiful forest green. But while we're here, I do wanna tell you a note about the packaging. A lot of luxury brands will make the experience of opening one of their brand new items amazing. And while that is very nice, don't be fooled by it because it is essentially just gift wrap. And anybody could go outside and grab a rock and beautifully gift wrap it. And that doesn't necessarily make it a good gift. It's still a rock. So the easiest way to spot the quality of a bag is actually in the hardware. Distinctly shaped hardware that was specifically made for the item that you're holding tends to be a great sign because it means that it was made specifically for the brand as opposed to the brand just buying it from a supplier and then they can reuse in a bunch of different bags. Similarly, engraved hardware with the name of the brand tends to be a really good sign because it means that one, the brand is willing to invest in having their brand name last for a long time in the bag because something like this, like a print, will eventually fade with wear and tear. But also, like I said before, this means that it was specifically made hardware for the item that you're holding. Having said that, you wanna look at the details of the hardware everywhere, not just what is visible on the inside, but also the zippers and on the inside of the bag, as well as the snap closures. Upon first look, this hardware looks amazing, but then when you look a little bit more closely, particularly in the strap that comes with the bag, it comes with this little lock and key, which is of great quality, but then in, if you inspect the actual hooks that come so that you can attach them to the bag, these are made out of plastic, as well as the zipper heads on here and on the inside of the bag. And the way I can tell is because I can tell where the molding was merging because I can see the little bit of excess plastic that is there. Now, is that necessarily a bad thing? No, there is high quality plastic, but it is something that you wanna keep an eye out for depending on how much you are willing to pay for this bag and how much people are charging you for the bag. Is plastic worth the same as like a metal that is tinted gold or something like that? I don't know, maybe that's up to you to decide. And lastly, when you are assessing the quality of the hardware, look for the little feet at the bottom of the bag. Not a necessity to make sure that the bag is high quality, but it is a nice touch because that means that whenever you put it down, the bag itself and the leather of the bag, if it's leather, is not gonna be scratching against the surface and instead it's going to hit this, these little feet which can always be replaced later. Another great tell of the quality of a handbag is actually in the liner on the inside of the bag. A lot of high quality luxury brands will have branded liner with the specific logo or initials of the brand, which means that it was custom made. Good sign, doesn't necessarily mean that it's a deal breaker if there isn't a branded liner, but what does indicate good quality of the brand is whether the liner is attached to the inside of the bag. There's a lot of bags where you can straight up pull out the liner and that is not a good sign because of two things. One, it means that the finishings are kind of haphazardly done and that's never a good sign because what else was haphazardly done? And second, it makes it a lot harder to find your stuff when you can actually pull the liner on accident. 
if there isn't any liner on the bag, then forget it and don't even consider it. Because think about what if you have a lip gloss or water or anything in your purse and it accidentally spills, then you're actually damaging the material on the inside of the bag as opposed to just damaging a liner that can easily be cleaned. In the case of this Teddy Blade bag, the liner seems to be of a leather material. I'm not entirely sure that it actually is leather. It could be a synthetic material made to look like leather, but it looks more like suede, which is great. But something to keep in mind is that as I put my stuff in and out, chances are that eventually it is going to scratch. And in that case, I'm scratching the nicer surface on the inside, as opposed to just something that can easily be cleaned. The next thing I want you to take a look at when assessing the quality of a handbag is the actual construction of the bag. In this case, the construction is very simple and that tends to be a good sign. Simple construction is actually harder to achieve, but it tends to be more durable because essentially the less things that there is to hold together, the less things that could potentially fall apart. In this case, what I do like about this bag is that the construction is super simple. It is essentially one very big flap that goes all around to here and here that is basically just reinforced by an extra strip of leather in the bottom so that it gives it a little bit more structure and then it's just attached to the sides which are a little bit more of a flexible material. Once you've assessed the construction of the bag, next I want you to look at the stitching. You want to make sure that the stitching is equidistant, that every stitch is the same size, but also that it's always consistent between the stitching and the edge of the bag throughout the purse. Similarly, I want you to look, is there any loose ends, any frayed ends or any like threads that are starting to come out? Because that will be a big indication of how the finishing was done, especially if it's brand new. You don't want it to be falling apart like this one already is, I'll show you. Like any tug will eventually start to pull all of the stitching. You can see right there that it's already falling apart. And this is brand new. I've worn it out only once and it's already detaching, which means that this will just continue to go through around and it will essentially not last very long. You can trim it, but that is never something that I recommend because it's just gonna keep going and going. So that's something to keep in mind when you're assessing the quality of the stitching is how it was finished. And ideally, you should not be able to see any edges. Any of the edges of the stitching should be hidden inside the bag and you shouldn't be able to see them like popping up or fraying in. And another thing, if you are looking for stitching and you cannot for the life of you find it, then run for your life. That bag is not worth a single penny of your money because that means that it was glued together and that thing is going to fall apart so quickly as soon as either the glue melts or like you tug it really hard, like just run, save your money, trust me. The next thing that you wanna assess when you're buying a bag is whether it's real leather. Not all bags are made out of leather, so this might not apply to you, but when you're buying a luxury brand, and particularly if they're charging you a high price for it, then you wanna make sure that you're actually getting what you are paying for. And when it comes to determining whether something is real leather or not, a lot of the times they will tell you, smell it. If it smells like leather, then it is leather. And I'm here to tell you that is wrong, my friend, because anybody can go out and buy a like new car smell air freshener and put it in their car, and that, that does not make the car brand new. It just makes it smell like a brand new car. At the end of the day, that leather smell can just be perfume. The easiest way to tell, particularly if you're buying a secondhand bag, is that leather over time will wear down, whereas plastic will start to peel. So it will be so obvious when something is plastic secondhand. But if you are buying a first time bag and you wanna make sure it's leather or plastic, the easiest way to tell is to hold up a flame to the leather. Obviously, if you don't own the bag, ask the merchant first if, you're, if they're comfortable with you doing it. But if you hold a flame up to it for like five to 10 seconds, plastic will catch flame like crazy, whereas leather will blemish a little bit and it will essentially darken, but it won't catch fire. Should we do it with this one? I could burn down the apartment and I frankly don't wanna do that. You know that TikTok meme, which is like, don't do it, girl, it's not worth it, don't do it. Right? I'm not gonna do it, girl, I'm not gonna do it. But I'm really not gonna do it because if I, 
I do not want to make that phone call to my boyfriend. This particular bag does come with a tag that says that it is genuine leather. I can tell that it's not genuine crocodile because the pattern is very symmetrical and nature is not symmetrical. So if you're buying something that is actually leather, unless it was particularly treated in, to look a certain way, it is not going to be entirely even and there's going to be like discolorations and blemishes and the same way that there would be in skin. Is that weird to say? It's true though. Now, the other thing with leather is that it does come with the ethical concern of where it was sourced from and, you know, just the ethics of leather in general. But a good way to still get a leather item and not contribute to, to the environmental aspects of that I'm not talking about the ethical, is to buy secondhand bags. Usually they're just as durable and if they've been well taken care of, they can last a long time and you're not contributing to making more items that could potentially have an, an impact on the environment. Now, when it comes to this particular bag, overall I like it. I think it's a beautiful design. I like the aesthetic of it, but when it comes to the quality, I would say that it's not bad quality, but it's not the best quality by any means either. And if it was a little bit less expensive, I think this bag retails for like $720 US, which I think is hefty. Like, you know, that's a month worth of rent in some places, a lot of places. And when you're buying something at that price tag, you wanna make sure that it's perfect, especially if it's brand new. You wanna make sure that the hardware is really nice, that it doesn't have any scratches, and particularly that the stitching is not falling apart before you've even had a chance to wear it out. Now, if you are interested in something like this, I do know that Teddy Blake very often has excellent sales on their website where you can get their bags for 40% off, 50% off, and maybe at that price tag, it's more worth it to you to get something like this that if it is real leather, it will last a long time, and then you can wear it over time. I am not very familiar with this brand other than this particular item that was sent to me, but I am curious to know how it will wear over time. So if you're interested in seeing a video about this particular bag like a year from now and seeing how it wears, let me know in the comments below. Now that you know how to assess the quality of a handbag, I wonder if you are willing to do me a favor. Go grab the handbag that you are wearing today and assess the quality of it. And let me know in the comments below what details, if any, you found and whether it was worth the investment. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It is the easiest way to support my channel. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell if you wanna be notified every time I post new videos. I have a mid-season capsule worker video coming up that I think you are really going to enjoy. And if you want more practical tips in videos like this, then make sure to check out this one where I show you how to take care of your jewelry so that it always looks new. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.